from Marshall No Stuff. I'm Marcus and I Joseph. Mm, that doesn't sound right. It's been a minute since I've made one of these. Oh yeah, I'm Marshall and I know stuff. Stick around and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. So I've made a couple of videos between the last one and this one. You probably noticed there's a big gap uh, between all these videos. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I will tell you that I'll probably upload those videos later because I, they just didn't have that flair that uh, I think you guys deserved out of my next video because there was such a long time in between uh, all of them. Um, <clears throat> I have been dealing with cleaning out my garage so I could make stuff and I uh, made myself a workbench this uh, past week, threw one together in, uh, in a few hours just so that, you know, I would have the space to be able to project. Uh, we're created in God's image and God's a creator and like God, I'm a creator and I'm going crazy. I'm not happy unless I'm creating. So I got some stuff together to start projecting. Uh, my project today, I had this idea. I saw this neat little, pro this, uh, little product that uh, has been buzzing around. They're all the rage. It's called a key bar. And I picked myself up a key bar and I thought to myself it would be cool if instead of just facilitating keys, it facilitated a knife. If I could get a make a knife blade like I wanted and get it in there and then that would be a cool pocket knife that also held my key. Um, I went to get, go to look it up and it turns out somebody already had this idea. I mean with 7 billion people in the world, you can't really have an original idea. But uh, it's not going to stop me from uh, creating this new project. So, I got myself the key bar, and I'm, uh, I got myself some high carbon knife steel in the mail, and I'm going to get to cutting out the knife that I want for my key bar insert. Today's Marshall Knows Stuff, we are going to make a key bar knife insert. All right, I'm going to dive right into it. Um, I'm going to take apart this key bar and start reverse engineering it. I know it sounds stupid to say reverse engineering because it's literally just like, two screws in the handle and then a couple of washers in between it. But uh, there's some very uh, stringent spacing that's in here that I need to be able to hit with, uh, with my blade to make sure that it fits right. So I'm going to take it all apart, reverse engineer the handle and make sure that the uh, blade is the right size. So let's hop to Now that I have this all apart uh, and I've got it traced, you can still uh, still make a turkey out of my hand also. So the reason I did this, and I know that it's a little bit on the outside, I'm gonna have to compensate for that. And uh, also, the reason that I got this little insert uh, from Keybar, this is the uh, utility blade insert, because I know on my blade, I'm going to need a place to stop it when it's closed and also a place to stop it when it's open. And uh, I'm going to have to accommodate my, uh, my overall blade size to work that in. So I wanted to get this so that I knew um, what the back of my blade is gonna look like. And uh, in fact, I'm gonna have to modify this one just a little bit too, because it doesn't quite fit on there the way that I want. So take note. When it's all the way closed, it stays out of the way, but this utility insert, whenever it's all the way open, it kind of slopes down a little bit, if you notice. And I don't want it to slope down, I want it to kind of come out a little bit. So this one, this back edge, I'm gonna have to bring in a little bit or out a little bit. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of both so that whenever I open my blade in my key bar, it's going to open all the way up and be a little bit straighter than this utility knife insert. So then that way, on the top, it's going to be a little bit more flush right there and open all the way up. Okay, now that I have it all traced out where I need, I've, uh, I actually kind of pushed my, um, my stopper out a little bit on, uh, on this side, like I said I was going to do. I'm a little bit outside of where the actual key bar is because I trace around the outside. So if I uh, come right there with the, uh, my little stop screw, it shouldn't rub all the way around, but uh, even if it does, I'll, I might even just uh, mess around with this a little bit and uh, cut more than one just to be sure. 
Then as I got it back together, I noticed that I was uh, running into some logistical problems. I was, uh, I pulled out my Spyderco Southard and I was uh, comparing it for the size. Because I thought that was a pretty good sized blade. I might just have to choke it up a little bit. And I think I might still kind of model that blade after that. But what I was noticing is it's kind of thick. It comes down pretty far. And I already have some of the handle occupied with other goodies on that side. So uh, what I might have to do is make it a bit thinner of a blade or bring it up a little bit higher. I think I might do the latter because uh, I want to still have a nice thick blade on there, but I can't have it too thick and sit right in the middle because then it's going to be occupying my whole handle and then it's, uh, then it's just going to be a, a pocket knife. It's not going to have any room for keys or anything like that. Although it could slide a little bit in between I don't, want to, I don't want it to take up the bulk of this side of the handle. Um, you probably want to shove everything over to one side and then have that big knife blade on the other side. Which is what I'm, I'm going to do. I have my clip on that side, so I think I'm going to use that side for it anyway. But um, I do want to cho uh, choke it up a little bit. So I think I'm going to have to decide that my stopping point for the blade gonna have to be somewhere around here so I can't go further than that without it impeding on my pocket or the other stuff in there too bad and um, I do want it to be a kind of thick blade and I'm thinking about a drop point I think I'm still gonna end up retaining a drop point blade I'm going to keep it somewhere around there. And that should be the bottom about right there. Probably pull this up a little bit. Pull, I can stand to fill that in there. So, I've got my blade shape right there, and on this other side, I've got my stop screw here, stop screw here, and so that I'm not in the way of anything else, there's really no need for me to fill out the rest of this, so I think I'm just going to tuck it in right here, and that'll be a nice simple design for it, a nice simple sturdy blade design. Uh, I think I might be able to get a little bit more out of the blade right there. A little bit more of a swoop, maybe. So, that's my template. That's my template for blade right there. Just by pulling the key bar apart and figuring out what I want out of the blade. It's going to be uh, a decent sized blade. Let's see. Yeah, still about two and three quarter inch blade. It's not too bad for uh, fitting into such a little device as this. So now I've got my template. We'll uh, go ahead and start tracing it out on my steel. I've got some uh, Alpha Knife Supply. Probably should have covered that beforehand. I've never worked with Alpha Knife Supply. This is an ADCR V2. And... Uh, it's kind of it's a simple steel, but it's going to be uh, quality carbon steel for uh, pocket knife application. So I'm going to make my template out of that. I'm going to uh, cut it out, and uh, once I have it cut and drilled, I'll probably put it into the key bar just to start playing around with it to see how well it moves around and uh, my space tolerances, etc. Before I go ahead and bevel and sharpen and uh, normalize and quench it and all that other good stuff that actually really takes up the bulk of building a knife. So let's get to that.
Okay, so now what I'm doing, <clears throat> uh, I know you've watched me do this in my previous videos. If you have not, then I'll uh, quickly recap. So to before you bevel, you just get a paint pen, a bright paint pen, and you mark your whole edge. And then I know that this is uh, about one eighth of an inch of steel that I cut this out of. 0.128 is only three, thousand, three thousandths of an inch over uh, one eighth of an inch. And then, so I take my one eighth drill bit and I mark along the edge. And because it was off just a little bit, what I did is I then flipped it over and then I marked that center line so that I have my middle and then whenever I go to bevel, I know where to stop on each side. So now I'm gonna put it on the jig and give my blade a bevel and then uh, we will be one step closer to having a sweet little piece in our pocket. Oh yeah, and uh, because I've already drilled out my hole for uh, because I've already drilled out my hole for the uh, screw in the handle, um, that is actually kind of beneficial to me. I usually use uh, a clamp to affix my blade to my jig, but instead, because I don't really have a handle on this one, uh, I don't have a tang to where I can clamp it and then get it out of the way and hold it flat on there still. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Um, Put a wood screw into there screw that directly onto there and it'll hold it flush so then that way i can jig it and then i'm not going to have that big c-clamp getting in the way of the belt sander and uh, messing up my bevel on there so choice I, if you're going to do this project i'd recommend doing your uh your screw hole first because then that uh that's going to give you something to affix your blade to your jig with with which to affix your blade to your jig Watch the preposition. All right, there it is. I gave it that little bit more of a plunge and I took the edge in a little bit on the back. I think it looks a lot cooler that way. It's got a, a cool little uh, style to it now. Uh, I've, I've got it screwed down onto my jig, my, uh, my bolt jig like I usually use, and I actually marked it on this side because I can't reference it with the tang on the other side where I usually will clamp it and I can see where it is. I've marked it on this side to make sure that I can compare it whenever I flip it over on the other side that it'll be a similar angle that, uh, that I'm beveling both the sides on. So now to the arduous and uh, lengthy process of putting the bevel onto it. That's, uh, I'll spare you the details of that. Uh, you've watched me do it a, m a bunch of times. So uh, I'll get to doing that off camera a little bit and then get back and uh, show you the result on the bevel. All right, freshly beveled blade. That's just the first side. Um, I like the way that it came out. It's a nice, it's a nice even bevel on all of it. Uh, hit my middle mark through the whole thing. Got a little bit overzealous on the tip, like I usually do, but that's uh, going to lend itself to the point that's going to come to at the end anyway. <clears throat> so I'm not that worried about that. Time to flip it over and give it the same on the other side. So what I did, you could you could use a you could absolutely use a protractor instead of doing this to get the exact right angle. But what I did, like I said, I, I marked my blade where I had it on the jig before, and then as I, I put it onto a uh, put the blade back onto the jig this time, I marked it again, and it looks like the same angle to me. And more importantly, I I measured the to the the drill hole on each of these, and I measured in on each side also to make sure that the uh, the hole for the blade is gonna be the same <clears throat> either way. So I'm, if you measure between each end point and then it meets in the middle, that's exactly where it needs to be. So it's gonna be the exact same angle on both sides. All right, I got my bevel on both sides now, as you can see, and uh, I you, I also took a little bit on, in on the spine just for some more accent. Uh, it gives it a little bit of curve there. It took out some of those hard lines. Just uh, gave it a little bit more style. Uh, now this steel is just so soft, and it's making me paranoid. So I want to I want to get it uh, hardened as fast as, po as possible. But before I do that, I'm trying to drill a hole through hardened steel. Sucks. 
and I know that I want those little set screws on the blade and on the, the back of it on the spine right here to stop it on the handle. So I'm going to put it back into my, uh, my key bar here so that I can mock it up, mark my holes, and uh, then drill that out. I'm not, I probably will wait to tap it until after it's hardened because I don't want to, I don't want to mess that up in the hardening process, but, um, uh, and quenching it cause I, you know, you've got to get it up to temperature. You know, you guys know how it goes. So I don't want to mess up my threads beforehand, but I, I will most definitely drill it out beforehand because I don't want to have to, um, <clears throat> wrestle that uphill, um, drilling a hole through hardened steel. So next step in the process, I'm getting this guy in. This thing already looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I'm happy with the way this thing is coming out. All right, I got my cap screws in the mail. So <clears throat> now that I have these, I can start working with this a little bit better. I put the blade back onto the handle and uh, I can still see the marks where I uh, put my guidelines for it. I set the the uh, cap screw on there and it's, I've got enough room on there to where I could drill it out and it's still going to sit where I want it. Almost exactly actually. Awesome. So I don't need to get a smaller cap screw. And then I also noticed that it's not impeding the movement anywhere along the top of the handle because the uh, circular shape at the top. So I have that there. It's, it's, it's exactly where I want it. Like exactly so now I'm going to mark the edges of it. If I have a working Sharpie. Just mark the outside with my fine tip Sharpie. If it wants to write. There it goes. Send it in there. So my drill hole. Needs to be right there. I'll get my itty bitty drill bit and drill it out there. And while I'm at that. Close it all the way and do the same thing for the stop on this side. Want it nestled snugly in that little groove on the handle. Miss Sharpie's giving me the business today. Oops, I pushed it. This thing is not wanting to write on this steel. There we go. So between those two edges, I can eyeball it and see that that is where my drill hole is going to be for the inside one. And get to drilling.
So, in my impatience, I kind of messed up the blade. Not kind of. I actually messed up the blade. I uh, broke off my tap in the drill hole and uh, then tried to pull it out with vice grips and broke off the other end of it, thereby compounding my situation. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not super hurt about it, though, because, like I said, I've never worked with a steel before, and I was going to have to uh, mess around with it to figure out proper quenching methods, uh, what worked be best for this particular type of steel. Anyway, um, I'm not going to bore you guys with the details. Uh, I've got already got a brilliant... Uh, template for the knife that I want to build and all I have to do is lay it down, cut it out, and bevel it again. Uh, easy peasy, one, two, three, easy. And uh, you guys will be none the wiser. I'll just, you know, cut to the next scene and I'll have a brilliant uh, blade with a build that's going swimmingly in my hand and I'll go, so now I've got the blade all tapped out. So now I've got my blade all tapped out. But uh, this build hasn't really gone swimmingly. It's, it's actually been uh, an uphill battle. Got it mocked up, and I made sure that everything uh, fits in there. But uh, I've been through a number of blanks. I've, I keep cutting out and messing up one blank somehow. Um, just being off a hair, a tiny hair, on those taps will throw the whole thing off. And the last one I did, that's exactly what happened. I actually kind of like this one. Um, I had it all tapped out, and I liked the big fat blade on it. But I was off by just a little bit, and uh, it wouldn't open and close because it, the, the set screw was a little bit too close to the handle. It wouldn't work. Uh, and then I actually kind of revised it. I decided I didn't want that big hunk of steel in my pocket. That would actually be really heavy. So I thinned it out. This one uh, might be cool for one later on. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have the chance to mess around with it. I can play around with it and, uh, do all kinds of different knife blades. I've got the, I've already got the key bar, so I'll just make whatever I want. So now that I know this one's in there, it fits well, it closes, um, everything looks like it's going good on it. Uh, now I can bevel and, uh, then normalize, then quench, and then I'm going to retap. Because I have a feeling in the expansion and contraction of the steel that my taps are going to be uh, distorted a little bit. So I'm going to re-tap and then I'll sharpen. So we're, uh, we're making progress on it. Let's pull this thing apart and uh, get cracking. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time also. I, this, between this scene and the last scene, it's actually been like a couple of months. I... I hardly ever get to get into the garage. Whenever I do, I make a blank that I mess up on and uh, then start over. Kind of demoralizing a little bit. It's kind of fun at the same time, seeing where you're making your problems. But <clears throat> um, I have not had the chance to find what works for quenching these blades yet. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that now. It should only take me about 30 minutes because I'm just going to use propane. I haven't had my forge set up yet. I, have, I, don't, I haven't made any more charcoal yet. So I'm just going to use propane. I'm going to get it up to critical temperature, let it cool down, and then I'm going to uh, try different lengths and different heats on all of these blanks until I have one that is uh, nice and hard. And I'll be able to tell that by sticking it in the vise and smashing it with a hammer to break it and... Once you look inside it, you'll be able to see like real fine powder. Um, that's the steel composition. So I'm gonna give that a real quick shot here and then hop Jeez. to. Um, I've normalized two of my blanks. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to quenching those. And I'm gonna see between those two if I can get that fine powder whenever I break it. And if not, then I'm gonna try um, different times and different temperatures. But I'm going to play with it. I'll play with it and I'll let you know what I found works for these. But I have two that are normalized already, so I'm going to mess with those, quench those real quick, and then let you know. You already know what Marshall quenching knives looks like, so I don't think I'll waste your time with any of those flame balls that I like to do for dramatic effect. All right, all done with my last normalization, and then I brought it up to... Uh, steady orange, almost yellow, got 
<clears throat> trying to like back off the heat before it got to that yellow point and now it's sitting in my oil I just put it in now I'm gonna give it 10 minutes just to be safe we'll just let it sit in there for 10 minutes I've got my oven preheating to 400 right now I think I'm gonna cycle maybe twice uh, the tempering I'll give it like about an hour each time at 400 and then uh, <clears throat> I think I'll be ready for stylization on this thing it will be the finishing touches on this thing after that Hey gang, so I uh, have now finished with the polishing of the uh, of the bevel, got it to a nice mirror polish. So doing it by hand, it allows you to make sure that you're on uh, your perfect plane on both sides. I got that bevel nice and polished now, mirror polish on it. You can uh, see yourself in the iPad. And uh, <clears throat> now that I have it polished, I'm pretty much ready to go. So. I'm not going to put that final bevel for the for the edge on it with the belt sander. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it that edge with my Lansky. My Lansky is what I use for like the pocket knives that I buy. I just realized like at the end of the uh, sharpening that the camera wasn't really <laughs> pointed at the work that I was doing. It was kind of pointed at the uh, whoa there overexposure. It's pointed at the uh, the box doesn't isn't really doing anybody any good but uh i am done with that edge on there and this sucker got sharp uh having that uh two separate bevels on it has actually done it really well it's about as straight of an edge as you'll ever see and you can it's not ever going to focus on it but you can see that it's also got a pretty nice polish and uh i'll bet you that it's ready to get shaving sharp and it said i put it at a 30 degree angle so that it would hold its edge a little bit better let's see if it passes the shave test oh yeah flying colors that hair is just falling right off that's why i don't have hair on my left hand so that part is ready uh and in the in between i uh i started to draw up my logo and i um was thinking about it, and I actually know graphic designers, one of which is my sissy Sierra. So I threw at her some ideas for the logo that I wanted to put on it and see if she'll come back with something. Right now, this thing is done. I might, I might just wrap this up and I'll show you what the logo is going to be after I'm done. But now I can actually put this guy together. I'm going to put these black set screws in like I wanted and then I'm gonna have to grind it off the other side I'll mark it and grind it to make sure because these uh, they're always gonna be too long I, you can't find an exact one you probably uh, maybe I don't know not never a Jedi never speaks in constants <laughs> Jedi's never a Jedi doesn't speak in constants uh, so I'm gonna File those off real quick. I'm gonna t I'm gonna torque those down. I'm gonna file them off, and then I will show you the knife put back together with the handle. Hey, sports fans. So I decided it's time to just wrap this video up. <clears throat> it actually does not have the, uh, the logo on it etched like I wanted to have happen. But uh, this guy's actually been in my pocket for over a month now. You might notice a little bit more beard growth. It's uh, been in my pocket that amount of time. And it's held up really well. This uh, 80 CRV2 80 CRV2 from Alpha Knife Supply has uh, been a pretty solid steel. Um, good edge retention on it. Uh, the, the problem that I did have with it, however, was you might notice a little bit of corrosion, uh, on the patina, but I don't necessarily think that's the, the steel's fault. That, uh, vinegar solution that I used for the patina probably just didn't work out that well. I'm, uh, I'm thinking I might use like a gun glue on it to, uh, get a more solid patina on it to keep it from being corroded because it does hang out in my pocket and, uh, it's winter time. So... It's wet all the time. I use it for cutting stuff all the time. So it's been getting its wear. It's uh, held up all right. The quenching methods that I used on it, 
probably want to stick with those too. Uh, I'm gonna. I've got a lot more uh, steel left over uh, that I that I ordered. I'm gonna be making some more knives out of. And this has been a kind of a fun project. I think I might make some more knife inserts for my key bar. Uh, I have a couple more ideas kicking around in my noodle that I'd like to put into this guy. But uh, for now, let's wrap this guy up. Let's call it a wrap. Wrap it up. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends, and let's keep knowing some stuff.